is Daphne from Scrap and Create, and we're working on page seven. Page seven. So we're going to start with six. Two flaps. You're going to have two flaps. They're they're six inches across and they're six and a half inches tall. You're going to score a half inch on the six and a half inch side. You're going to do that twice. You're going to have an upper and a lower. And I am going to find my, they're going to be centered. I'm going to find my center point here real quick. And just put a little mark. And I'm going to do the same thing for the flap. Okay, there it is. Now when I do my installation, I just have to line those two dots up. Again, line that up. Perfect. Okay, now I don't need to do that on the top side because I'm going to line this up based on this flap. Okay, and I'm going to turn it around. There we go. <clears throat> Line that up. I'm going to slide this down, get close to my edge where I think it should be. I'm not going to press it into place just yet. Let's lightly tack it. It needs to go over a little bit. <laughs> I think I'll do it this way where I can see the, the edges line up. There we go. Perfect. So those lined up just nice, just like I expected. Now we're going to open that up and we're going to put two pockets in. One on the, the left and one on the right. And these are three inches across by nine inches tall. Three by nine. You're going to score a half inch on three sides to create that pocket. And the opening of the pocket is going to face toward the center of this signature or page, if you will. I'm going to make sure it's going to close without interfering with the flap. Okay, now we're going to do one on this side. Oh my. Fumble fingers. Okay, same thing. Got a little bit of tape on this outside, so I'm going to tuck that under. I pushed it a little too far forward. A little bit in the score line. So I'm going to see if I can burnish that. Oh, that's it's misaligning my flap. So I need to move that up a little. So I haven't burnished it yet, so it should lift pretty easily. And it is. Oops. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to shift it a little so that the um, flap closes a little better. Oh, I see the issues. Okay, I see the issue. This is not straight. There we go. Much better. I had my flap head drop down a little bit. So 
we're all good now. When I, when I laid it in and brush everything into place, and then we're going to decorate. Okay, so we've got two flaps. These are six by six and a half. Score half inch on the six and a half inch side. And you've got two pockets, three by nine. Score half inch on three sides. And you're going to have these pockets. Okay, now ready to start decorating. So this is going to become the centerpiece. I think this goes, I'm not sure. I think it's the centerpiece. Let's see. Uh, yeah. Okay, and then this doesn't look right. Let me check and see if I've got another pocket piece. I don't want it to say Christmas, Christmas. This is part of a continuous pattern. By the way, these are eight by eights. So let me see if I've got something else to put here. That just looks really weird. And I can't turn it over. It's not the right pattern. It's on the big back side of candy. There we go. Mm, that's the, this is from the 12 by 12, so if I can avoid using 12 by 12, I will, just so that these are all the same scale. Huh, that's also 12 by 12. Well, this is what's left. So I wound up using two 8x8s here. So there's one 8x8, eight eight, and then I had to cut a sliver off of another one to fit here. And like I said, I'm not liking that cookies cookies. So what I'm going to do is cut another piece off from here. And these should fit over the pockets. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Let's see the edges. That looks good. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and mark this and trim it. And then basically we have, we'll have two of these. Yeah, I, uh, I didn't sleep well and woke up with a neck. Crink, crink in my neck. This doesn't seem right. But I'll check. It seems a little bit. Oh, it is. It's way too big. Did I mark it and not see where I marked it? That's weird. Huh. I was way off. I don't know what I was measuring. Let me screw this wide. Weird. I can't figure out what I just did or why I just did that. <laughs> but I definitely made it wider than it needed to be. Oh, I know why. Because <laughs> that's the piece I cut off. <laughs> dumb, dumb. <laughs> dumb, dumb. So this is the middle. This is what's left over, and there's our two sides. <laughs> oh my, I'm losing my marbles. Okay, let's go ahead and... This needs to be trimmed down so it'll fit into the pocket. Let's see what we've got going. Yeah. Okay, now it should fit slightly into the pocket on both sides. And it's stuck on something, it's stuck under the tape. There we go. There we go. It's got to fit. Okay. So I'm going to leave that there and go ahead and glue down the two sides real quick. Oh, it's too. I think these both need to. Yeah. I hadn't trimmed these down yet. Inko. I thought I did this the other night when I was prepping. Apparently not. Okay. I think about how this is going in the book. Okay. Just want to make sure I do everything right side up.
you ever have those days when your hands just don't work? I don't know what's going on this week, but I keep bumping into things and dropping things. And I'm not tired, it's not that. I just feel uh, clumsy. Okay, there we go. That's done. So now I've got a pile of stuff I need to move. I should have done that to get it out of our field of vision. Okay. Now, let's do this. Let's get, um, I think I want the top to come down over the bottom. Let's get our magnets set. That's off a little bit. Why is that so far off, I wonder? Um, magnets. When I say it's off, you can see that little tip is sticking out. So I'm going to try to burnish it into, into the correct state before I finalize the magnet placement, and then the magnet will help pull it over to the right location, or to a square location. Okay, I started using a new camera. I'm using actually a GoPro now, which is supposed to have um, higher resolution. Can you guys tell the difference? I'm curious. Leave me a note in the comments. Okay, it's still off a little, but it's much better. That's a lot. That's a lot better. Okay, now I'm going to reburnish my hinge. I think it's just because of the pocket is just slightly off. There we go. Now it's the sides are nice and even. So a very small change, and it makes for a nice clean finish. Okay, so I have these two. It's from the 12 by 12. I think this is so pretty. Um, I love these flowers. I think it's my favorite pattern in the collection and the cable knit. Now, if you're going by the words, this is the upside. And this, I think is, yeah, this is also the upside. And um, that means that these flowers are kind of juxtaposed. So you have flowers on this side, flowers on this side. So I think that looks nice. So that's what we're going to do. Again, this is from the 12 by 12. The uh, cookie recipe page is, there's I use two 8 by 8s, just cut different ways. Oh, crud. I didn't trim it. So... This should be over six inches. It's not. I don't know why I usually if I've inked it, that's um that tells me I've already kind of done that trim, but I inked it and I had not, so we will just move ahead with this one while we're waiting for that glue to dry and I'll return it. Actually, I wish I would have trimmed it off this and then pulled the flowers down further, but it is what it is. We're going this way. She's pretty. I hope I still have her on my 8 by 8 If I do, I'm going to use that for page 8. She will be the uh, centerpiece of page 8, providing I still have those 8 by 8s because I did use all the 12 by 12s of this pattern already. Look at that. Oh, I love it. I love it. Okay, that's almost dry. This is dry enough to put into the trimmer. It goes this way. Let's see. Nope, that's it. I had it right. Still, 
a little too long. Try that one more time. And it's because there's a little bit of a bow here. So I'm finalizing my cut based on, okay, that. Oh, I'm sure this is a relief from my last page where I made mistake after mistake. Because it is for me, it feels, feels normal. Okay, now we're going to do oops, the inside. So the inside, I really wanted to continue using the same pattern. So I'm taking the scraps that I had from the 12 by 12 that I cut down for this and using them on the flip side. That's an extra. Okay, and so I am going to piece together two panels. That's one. And this will be two. And this one I can turn any direction, so I'm going to go ahead and turn it this direction, and then I'll swap these two. And hopefully you can see the whole thing. But So I've got flowers on top left, bottom right, and then this is more of a pattern on the juxtaposed sides. So uh, basically I think this was four by six. Actually it's a little less important oh, you know what these are from the eight by eight by the way little less and so they're not exactly equal i think this is three three and three quarters and this one's less so i kind of based it on the scraps that i had left over so i didn't necessarily want to make these exactly the same same pattern palette but not the same sizes okay hopefully that makes sense i'm going to close this and we're going to work on the top first And there's a little bit of writing in here, but you can't tell if it's upside down or right side up. On this side, it's pretty obvious that this is right side up. So that's how I... Oh, shoot. I've got a problem. My magnet's going to be exposed. So I may have to swap. Yeah, I'll have to swap this pattern, which comes completely over the magnet. I think I knew that. Okay, no problem. So uh, keep that in mind as you're using your scraps. If you center your magnet, will you have enough of one of the panels to cover it? That may even be why I made this one larger. I just don't remember. I did this a few days ago. So what's going to happen is I'm going to have some tape, I think, stick through. And if I do, I'm going to trim it before I... It's just barely sticking out, so I'm just going to push it under with um well i'll just trim it off with my exacto knife it's tiny but it's enough that it, it'll attract um fibers and there we go perfect perfect so, good. so i guess i did do some of the trimming on the inside and lift the outsides off. Out. Okay. Loving it. Loving it. Oops, that's a little too tight. Look at that. Oof, I love it. I love color blocking. I think it makes visually so interesting. And then when you have you know, let me find something to stick on top of it. When you have a picture, I don't know, I just think it makes it look really interesting when you've got these two in the back and they're not symmetrical. It just makes it much more interesting because this is a lot of symmetry. This is a 4x4 four four on top of an 6x6, uh, six six. so that creates some symmetry in that you have an equal border all the way around it, but this sort of breaks that up, makes it a little bit more interesting. And say, for example, 
four by four on a, on a single six by six. Of course, a lot of that's going to depend on your background pattern, right? Four by four on here looks pretty good because it looks like your photo is going to be framed. Um, the corner would be framed with flowers. Anyways, things to think about when you're designing your own albums. Okay, now we're going to use these. Trim, I want to trim these for, or check them. Have they been? Yeah, they have. And eight. All righty. So now it's just a question of which way. And I, the flowers on the top are over here on the right. So I think I want to put these here on the left. Like it's really pure preference. Whatever you think looks good. got distracted by my phone. I think it's spam because I don't know anybody in Tupelo, Mississippi. But if it's one of you guys calling, one of the viewers or a customer, I'll call you back. Very good. Okay. Beautiful. I love it. Okay, now I'm going to set all this aside. We're going to come up with some inserts. So we still have um, a lot of the cards from Bits and Bobs. So I'm going to take the fruit and spice and everything nice because it's a recipe card. And so this is also a recipe card, but as you can see, there's nothing interesting on the back. So I'm going to put this one on black cardstock. And let's see. That's another recipe card. I think that's, there it is, there's the other one. I'm trying to decide if I want to turn this into a card with this as the cover and this as the, um, the inside on black cardstock. I'm not sure, but I do know that I'm going to go ahead and put black cardstock on the back of both of these because there's nothing interesting and these would be great for photo mounts. Also, um, this lined paper is great for um, journaling, even though it just says directions and recipe. You can just journal whatever you want on there. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, make a couple of cards. Or not cards, but just back them, I think. So I'm looking through my scraps. I like to try to use those up if I can. Perfect, this is the right size. So let's get some ink on it. I already did, never mind. Okay, I'm trying right now. I'm trying to decide if I want to keep the panel this large, and then add a decorative strip down here, or if I just want this to be the size of the card. And I think I'm going to make it the size of the um, recipe card. 
Um, and I'll talk to, talk a little bit about that after I cut it and, and mount it. I'm going to put it in on the page and I'll show you what I was thinking. Oops. Got too much junk on my desk. Junk stuff. Good stuff. <laughs> Got too much good stuff on my desk. Okay, that's not the piece I want to cut. This is. Beautiful. Uh, eight from, this is uh, cut apart from the 8x8, eight eight, as it says right there. <laughs> but I could tell from the scale of the, the images. Okay, now I'm going to bring the page back in and show you why I think I want to keep it the original side is because we've got stuff going in pockets on both sides, right? Um, and if you make the inserts too big, it's going to make them hard to get to take out. So what I'm planning is these two small, and then I'm going to do one large. And the large insert is going to be 6 inches. So it's going to go in this pocket, and it's going to come over these uh, I said six inches, no, seven and a quarter. It's going to go into one of the pockets and come and lay on top of the other inserts to keep these guys from shaking around too much. So this is six inches long, but basically it will come over just like that. Okay, so um, let me do that. Oh, so the, the large insert is probably going to be, sorry, six by seven. Might be bigger. We'll go ahead and make this card. So these are the nice thing about the blue fern bits and bobs is they are true four by six. Um, that's not the case with a lot of the what I would consider cards or ephemeras pieces in other collections. So graphic is under four by five, and some of the other ones are even smaller, uh, smaller than that. Okay, so four, so eight, uh, four and a quarter is what I need. Four and a quarter. By six. Do I want it to open up and down or side to side? Uh, side to side, because I want the, uh, well, it's a choice. So that's, that's what I'm dealing with. Do I want it to open like this? Or like this. I like this better. Okay, so that means it needs to be eight and is that right? Eight and a quarter by six and one. There we go. Okay, so there's the six and one eight. And then this would be the top, and this would be the inside. So I'll score this in half, which is four and a quarter. Six and one eighth by four, six and one eighth by eight and a half. Score at four and a quarter. And then we have our card, and then what I'm going to do is do a final trim. And I like to do it this way because then I know these two edges are completely squared off and will close. One side's not longer than the other. So even though I knew it was going to be smaller than eight and a half, I'd rather make that final trim when the card is folded. Hopefully that makes sense. Because when you score, it takes up part of it and it's really hard to measure. How much it's going to take up because it depends on how thick your cardstock is. I'm using 65 pound, but if you're using 80 pound, which is fine, the score mark is going to be different. Not the score mark. What I meant to say is how much the score takes up across the span of the card will be different. Okay, I think I want to 
look this way. Let's think about that. So when you open it, do you want it this way and you set it this way to read it? Or do you want it this way and you set it up like a tent to read it? I don't know. Go either way is fine. I'm gonna go this way. Okay. Beautiful. So now we have that card. That's gonna go in. Looks like I missed a corner here, so I'm gonna put some glitter. Yep. I'm gonna switch these because I want the open side of the card inside the pocket. Okay, there we go. Now I'm going to make the larger one, which hopefully I've got something here to use from the scraps. This is six. I'm going to do six by seven. Okay, just a flat piece, six by seven. And what I'm going to do here is a bunch of color blocking of my scraps. Because I don't, mm, let me check. I don't think I want to cut through another large piece, if that makes sense. This is too drastically different from the pattern inside. That's so pretty. Or I could do something like this and then have... That's it. That's what I'm doing. So this is a little bit too small. I need six and one eighth. Give me a second. I've got... I'm hopeful. I've got something that's up. And I don't, I'm going to have to cut through a, a new sheet. That's okay. Oh, that's not very square. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put this on. We'll trim this to fit, and then I'll know where this final line needs to be. And I'm going to tuck it into the pocket over there, so this is what shows, which is pretty. And most of this will be in the pocket. I could use her. <laughs> She's not quite wide enough. I think I'll go back. How big is this? So I want it to be seven. So maybe she maybe she is. Oh, it's ten. Oh, hold on. Let me look. I was thinking it was an eight by eight page. So let's test this and see. That's too big. So I don't want it to go in this pocket. Um, otherwise, you're kind of going in and out. So I'm going to mark it right about here. Yeah. So six by seven or six and one eighth by seven is what I wound up with. And the one eighth is because I didn't want to trim my card down. I just wanted to use it in its full size. That's why it's an odd number. Okay, now we can trim this down to fit.
check. Can actually be a little shorter. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna make that make that gap a little bit wider. I don't think there's enough black showing. Okay. Let's see. Yep, that's it. Okay, let's eat this my down. And again, this was just a scrap I had. This is eight by eight. And this is a, a bits and bobs is what they call them from Blue Fern. Okay, we have this side or this side. Let's decide what's going to look best in the pocket. I think most of that's going to be in the pocket. So we have this, which is a lot of a lot of print, a lot of text for this side. I think I like this better. It's just a little more subtle, so it doesn't look like it's competing. And of course, you can add many more inserts um, to your pockets than I do for the video. Um, I always try to do, you know, fill it with something, but depending on what your scraps are, you know, you can put more in there, or you can just put uh, cardstock back photos in here, just on their own individual photo mats. So, yeah. Okay, and there's the two cards are in there. They're the same height as this, but it doesn't matter if they... So it looks like a nice little frame there. And that actually wasn't deliberate. So that turned out lovely. Okay, so we've got our pockets and our flaps, and that is it for page seven. When I come back, we're going to work on page eight. I'll see you guys soon.